There's nothing quite as iconic in the low wetlands of the Pacific Northwest than these groves of gorgeous red alder. When these trees are fast growing but short lived hardwoods, rarely living over 50 years, and they tend to dominate the areas that they grow in for the first 25 or so. They're key first generational successors to areas of disturbance such as riverbeds, floodplains, stream banks, and even second and third growth forests of Douglas fir. Now red alders drastically help to improve the quality of the soil because they're really good at fixing atmospheric nitrogen and sending it back into the soil through the root nodules. As a result, they tend to have a rich understory of grasses, sedges, and ferns and help to create better soil for trees like Douglas fir to establish themselves in. Now these trees are some of the most easily recognizable trees in our bioregion because they're really iconic grayish white bark that cracks to black as it ages that tends to be covered in spots of moss and lichen which creates these white spots probably because they really lichen to grow on that bark. <laughs> Now the leaves on red alders tend to be this really classic elliptical shape with blunted edges around them. They don't change color much in the fall, unlike cottonwoods or aspens. Their flowers tend to be these long, droopy, worm-like things that are usually green to brown, uh, known as catkins, with the female catkins being much smaller than the male catkins. Once those are fertilized, they form these cool brown woody nuts that uh, hang on the tree all winter long and flake off into ovular nutlets, but uh, they're really not very good. Oh, it's really common for bears in the area to scratch these up and mark them for other bears. This one, uh, this is from my buddy Mike. He's saying, what's up? How was your weekend? Yeah, I'll have to find another tree to get back to him on. Now I know what you might be thinking. You're like, Ross, this tree's called a red alder. It's white. I don't get it. Well, underneath the bark of the tree, the cambium, when damaged or cut, it tends to bleed or stain the wood this kind of rusty reddish color, and that's where it gets its name. And this was actually used as a dye by many First Nations people in ceremony, as well as for like, things like fish nets, where it would uh, make the, the nets invisible to fish in the murky waters around here. The wood of these trees is often highly prized too, as a great wood for smoking salmon because it burns really clean, has a nice flavor to it. All in all, great trees. beauty. If you're enjoying these videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel below or just keep watching to keep learning because the more you know, the more fun you're going to have next time you're outside in nature enjoying it. Sure is rad out here. There's just, there's so much green, you know, I've never seen this much green before.